So in life, you always have two options. Whenever something breaks or doesn't work like it used to anymore, whenever you need to buy something new, you have two options. Whether it's a car, a fan, a house, a rocket, or a computer, any of these things, you always have that second option, but not many people know about it. What is that second option? Build it. So I know what you're going to say, like, I can't build a car or a rocket or a computer. But when I explain that you can, you're going to ask why. And today, I'm here to bring you on my journey of building and explain why you should build. So there's this problem called the last mile problem in public transportation. And basically what happens is people will take a car if the distance is long and they'll walk if the distance is short. But most distances that people need to travel are in this gray area called the last mile. It's kind of like you don't want to walk because it's too far, but you don't want to drive because it's too short. And what happens is at UMass, it's a 1,500 acre campus, and my last mile problem is a last dozen miles problem. So I end up having to run back and forth across campus. My solution to this was buying an electric skateboard. Now, this skateboard gets about 12 miles of range. It can go up some decent hills, and it is pretty fast. But you think that this would solve my last mile problem, and it actually doesn't. It turns out that my last mile problem is a lot more than I thought, and this board just doesn't cut it. So I ended up looking into building. Now, where do you even start when you want to build something like an electric skateboard? You have video tutorials, books, websites. There's a lot of places that you can go for that material. But the best place by far is a forum. So a forum is a place online where people from all around the world can share their ideas and share their knowledge and skills so that they can help each other. You can ask questions. People make video tutorials. There's links to other websites that help you. It's kind of like a, a congregation of all of these resources in one place. So a forum is the best place to start. For me, I went on the electric skateboard forums. I learned everything I could about electronics, so soldering, spot welding, and anything to do with motors or batteries, whatever there is out in the forums, it's huge. This is the electric skateboard anatomy. And there's a lot to learn here, but the big parts on this are the motor, the VESC, which is a motor controller, and the battery. The other things are sensors or safety equipment, like an anti-spark switch, a connector, or fuse. So when you go to build a skateboard, the hardest part is the battery. And now a lot of people think that you can just slap a car battery on top of the skateboard and everything will be fine. But the power to rate ratio of that would be very low. You wouldn't be able to get anywhere and the board would weigh a ton. So what we do is we use lithium ion battery cells. These are the same ones that you would find in an electric car or in your phone. And with a process called spot welding, what we do is we heat up that nickel strip on top for about 20 milliseconds. That's like 1 30th of a second. And if you go for a normal amount of time, you get a perfect little spot weld that gets it on the battery. Too long, you start getting sparks like this. And if you go any longer than that, you, I would end up on the local news rather than here on stage. <laughs> so uh, you'd think we'd have a good way to time that little 30 millisecond switch right there. And it's actually me flickering a light switch to turn it on and off to spot weld. Because this spot welder, if I were to buy it, would cost $300. But we built it out of scrap car parts and made it for about $5 in wire. So me flicking the switch, it's a little bit dangerous. So that's why we wear safety gear. <laughs> and you can see we have our DIY spot welder attached to a car battery. I'm wearing a motorcycle helmet. I got my friend Lucas up there, double glasses and the, the hoodie on. So. Safety first. <laughs> now, when you go to make the battery, this is what it looks like on the inside. You have your sensors or battery management system at the top that figures out the temperature of the battery and the voltage of the battery. It's very important to keep it stable. Um, you also have the charging cables and other things like that. And it all comes together in a nice, neat little suitcase that you can ratchet strap onto the board. Now. You also have to mount motors onto the board. And what we do is we buy the deck and we buy the trucks for the skateboard, which is like the, the metal that holds the tires on. But to attach the motors, that's something that you have to do on your own a lot of times. So we start from scrap aluminum, and then we scribe the metal, 
So we actually measure it out, figure out the motor size and everything. And then we drill out those holes and we get a finished aluminum part that can mount the motor. And this is what a finished motor mount looks like on the trucks. So there it is, painted, bolted on, and then here is the motor wiring. And you can see you got all kinds of sensor cables going in, you got your two power wires there, and this is a waterproof case, so it has off-road capabilities and mud and everything else. Now, when you combine all of this and a lot of other small steps, you get this. This is an electric mountain board, and it is very powerful. This is not your normal electric skateboard. It has amazing amounts of torque. <laughs> you can rip up gravel, you can landscape front yards, all kinds of things. My dad hates it. Um, <laughs> You can, the control off-road with foot straps is amazing. So you can shred into corners. The carbon fiber deck lets you have a springy jump. I mean, everything about this board is just incredible. It's something that you can't really buy off the shelf. And the speed. Everyone asks about the speed, so as a bad habit, <laughs> we like to blow through the, the speedometers and speed traps in my town uh, and try to set them off. It's a good, we have a good time. <laughs> But it's not just about building a crazy board. It's about the skills that you learn along the way, the friends that you make. Because that winter, we made not one, but two of these epic skateboards. And you can see me here with Lucas. We're going on trails. We're going on adventures all around my hometown in Rhode Island. The 30-mile adventures out to see my aunt, you name it. it. These boards have the range. Previously, my old skateboard, it was 12 miles of range. These right here, you can get about 30 to 50 miles of range depending on how you ride. Now, there are no limits to building. And what happens is when we went through the building process and we started driving all around the state, there are things that we realized, like mistakes that we made or things that we could have improved. We also had things that we wanted. Uh, things like more torque, more range, larger wheels so you could go off-road. And we also needed better cooling, because by this point, I had melted four of my motors. And it was becoming a little bit expensive to replace motors. <laughs> we also learned new things like 3D printing, battery building improvements. So we, we got more sophisticated. I didn't use a light switch anymore. I had a timer switch, so it was a little bit safer. And there's a lot of general experience with working with metals, uh, learning how to solder a little bit better, um, and definitely working with new materials that just came out. And starting from scratch, building something entirely new with all of this that we wanted, we decided to build the world's most powerful electric skateboard. So as a slight disclaimer, it's for rear wheel drive only. Um, there are four wheel drive configurations that are more powerful, but we have the hardware and components to bring this up to its full potential. Um, it's just a time constraint at this moment. So what are its power capabilities? Well, your average house uses about 24,000 watts at peak consumption. This would blow every circuit breaker in your house. Um, it wouldn't look good. The motor controllers that we're using on this board can peak at about 30,000 watts each. So that's a 60,000 watt combined total. You know what your house would look like with 60,000 watts? Like that. <laughs> it would not be good. For other things like the motors, people say, my motors are going to look like the house. But we used some big motors. And if you look really closely on the motor, there are these little gold prongs there. Um, yeah, you, you'll be able to see them up here. So little gold prongs, those are actually to connect water cooling loops. And over here we have a custom 3D printed water loop right here. So there's a radiator, a pump system that circulates the water and keeps the motors cool when they're running at those high powers. We also had to switch up the parts that we used to transfer that power. So we ended up using motorcycle chains rather than belts in previous versions. This solves a lot of problems off-road, so you can also go through snow, go through mud. These things last. Now, the process for building a skateboard like this is pretty intense. We had many hours of spot welding, lots of wiring work that went into this. And you can see our, our new little spot welder there with uh, the timer on it. So no, no more two-person sparks or anything. 
the motors, the motor mounts, were machined out of stock aluminum. So we were able to learn all of these skills just online on the forums, on these communities that bring together all of this information. Here you can see the battery packs being assembled. And these are all custom 3D printed battery packs to perfectly cradle the battery so that when you're riding off-road, these things don't combust. So what should you take away? I'm not saying to go out and build an electric skateboard. What I'm trying to drive home is that you should, you should look into whatever you're interested in and ask yourself, could I build this? And a lot of times, you can build those things if you look online and you try to find those forums and you go on and look at it. So whether it's baking or stitching or building a computer, you can go online. I invite you to go online and look at those things. Lucas here is actually wearing a shirt that was stitched himself. It was completely from scratch, a roll of fabric, and now he's wearing the shirt. This is what I'm saying. You can go out there and find anything, anything you're interested in, and you can build it, and you can build it better. Thank you.